Today I want to open the Bible and answer the question that has been sent in. What is the last trumpet in the book of Revelation? What is the last trumpet in the book of Revelation? And uh, to be more specific, the question uh, arises in the reading of Revelation chapter 11 as we see in a series of judgments in Revelation 11 that I'll touch upon today that there are seven trumpets in those three series of judgments that are outpoured during the tribulation and there has been some question on quote unquote the last trumpet because we have references in the New Testament on more than one occasion to trumpets. We have a reference of the last trumpet in 1 Corinthians 15. We have a reference to the trump of God in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. And then we have this series of judgments called the seven trumpets in the book of Revelation. And so that's where we're headed today because there is some confusion on this subject. And uh, some of you perhaps have been around Bible study and Bible prophecy long enough to hear that there are varying views on the chronology of the tribulation. There are some that believe in what is called the pre-tribulation view, which uh, unashamedly is what I strongly uh, espouse. I believe the greatest weight of biblical scholarship rests upon the rapture taking place before the tribulation. That is oftentimes called in theological circles the pre-tribulation view. And then there is a mid-tribulation view, and of course that speaks for itself. There are some that believe that the church goes through the first half of the tribulation and then they are raptured halfway through when the Antichrist breaks his treaty with the nation of Israel. And then the third and most popular uh, view uh, would be post-tribulation. And those who believe and espouse post-tribulation theology believe that the church is going through the entirety of the tribulation. And again, uh, I believe there is strong biblical evidence uh, to dismantle that view. Of the three views, pre-trib, mid-trib, and post-trib, and there are others, but of those three, pre-trib is uh, held by the majority of modern scholarship, or at least uh, conservative scholarship. Uh, liberal scholarship in the day and age in which we live is all over the map. So let's go right into our text. And as always, thank you to uh, the thousands of our faithful students and growing audience uh, who join us for Bible study and a special welcome to all of the new students. Uh, if you do not already subscribe and you enjoy uh, Bible teaching on Bible prophecy and difficult Bible questions, uh, be sure to subscribe to the channel. It's free and hit the notification bell that will uh, give you an obvious notification every time there's new teaching and typically depending on my schedule, there's new content twice a week. Revelation chapter 11, beginning to read at verse 15 and reading down through verse 18. I'm reading today out of the New Living Translation. Revelation chapter 11, beginning to read at verse 15, reading through verse 18. And again, our study today, what is the last trumpet in the book of Revelation? Revelation 11:15. the Bible says, Then the seventh angel blew his trumpet. We'll come back to this. And there were loud voices shouting in heaven, The world has now become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ, and he will reign forever and ever. The 24 elders sitting on their thrones before God fell with their faces to the ground, and worshiped him. And they said, We give thanks to you, Lord God, the Almighty, the one who is and who always was, for now you have assumed your great power and have begun to reign. 
The nations were filled with wrath, but now the time of your wrath has come. It is time to judge the dead and reward your servants, the prophets, as well as your holy people and all who fear your name. From the least to the greatest, it is time to destroy all who have caused destruction on the earth. Now, because there is another passage that is oftentimes uh, confused with this, I also want to take the time uh, to take you into 1 Corinthians and the 15th chapter. 1 Corinthians and the 15th chapter. And let's go down to verses 51 through 53. 1 Corinthians 15, verses 51 through 53. The Bible said, But let me reveal to you a wonderful secret. We will not all die, but we will all be transformed. And highlight verse 52, because this is where uh, the comparison and sometimes the confusion is rooted. Verse 52, it will happen in a moment, in the blink of an eye, when the last trumpet, the last trumpet, highlight that, when the last trumpet is blown. For when the trumpet sounds, those who have died will be raised to live forever. And we who are living will also be transformed. For our dying bodies must be transformed into bodies that will never die. Our mortal bodies must be transformed into immortal bodies. Now, this is perhaps not uh, by any means a major doctrine that we're discussing today, but there is confusion on it, and because there have been questions that have come in, I want to take the time to address it. And I'm certain many of you who are viewing with us right now uh, have never had any proper teaching on the trumpets in the New Testament, and in particular, the trumpets of God in the subject of Bible prophecy. But again, the most important thing that I want to have between you and I is an understanding that the purpose of Bible prophecy is not just to attain a knowledge of Christian prophetic trivia, but the most important thing about Bible prophecy is to keep us motivated to live a holy life and to live every day ready to meet the Lord. And there will be some of you who are listening to me right now that if you'd be honest with God, you perhaps are not living ready to meet the Lord. And so at the end of our time together, I want you to be patient because I'd like to have the privilege of praying with you. I want each and every one of you to be ready to meet the Lord. And so I promise you at the end of our study, we'll pray with you and I want you to prepare your heart uh, during this time of study. Uh, with that said, let's take a moment to pray together. Father, once again, as we open up the Holy Bible, we humble our hearts in your holy presence and give you praise and honor and glory. Thank you for every blessing that you have sent our way. Every good thing in our life has come from your generous and gracious hand, and we acknowledge you. Thank you for the shoes on our feet, for the clothes on our back, for the food on our table, and for all of your faithful, tender, loving care. We pray that you would guide us today by the Holy Spirit through the teaching of your sacred word, and I pray that you would help every listener to live ready in these last days for the soon coming of the Lord Jesus. And we'll be careful to give you the praise and the honor and the glory. For we ask it all in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. 
Let me be very specific. Here is the question that we are addressing today, and really the only question that I'm going to focus on because it deserves proper attention. Here it is, and if you don't already have it written down, write it down. Is the last trumpet in Revelation chapter 11 the same last trumpet that we read about in 1 Corinthians and the 15th chapter? That's the question today. That's the confusion. There is spurious teaching on that. We're going to bring some light to it. But as we begin, you need to know where we're going. So that's where we're going. Is the last trumpet, or specifically the seventh trumpet in Revelation chapter 11, is that the same trumpet that the Apostle Paul referred to in 1 Corinthians chapter 15? You might also want to make a note that there is a mention of a final trumpet or the trump of God, depending upon the version of the uh, Bible that you're reading, uh, also written by the Apostle Paul in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Now, if you've been a student of mine for any time at all, uh, perhaps one of the most um, powerful and popular subjects, I would say, or at least from what I have from communications from you and from people in my 44 years of travel around the world, there are multitudes of questions that surround the rapture. And so the passage in 1 Corinthians 15, if you're a new student, that passage in 1 Corinthians 15 verses 51 through 55 is one of the classic passages that is addressing the rapture of the church. Also, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verses 13 through 18, that would be uh, the second in what I would call the three most popular passages in the New Testament on the rapture, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, and then John 14 verses 1, 2, and 3. Those are the three most classic passages in the New Testament often used in the teaching of the doctrine of the rapture. Now, it's important for you to understand that because we're asking the question, is the last trumpet in Revelation chapter 11 the same as 1 Corinthians 15 verses 51 through 55, 1 Thessalonians 4 verses 13 through 18? Is it the same? So that's where we begin. If you're taking notes, number one, what is the chronological context to the last trumpet in Revelation chapter 11. Uh, if you're a new student, I ask you to keep life notes. If you're going to be a serious student of the Bible, you have to be a serious student of Bible prophecy because 27% of your Bible is prophecy content. And so question number one, what is the chronological context to the last trumpet in Revelation chapter 11. Now always remember, and those of you who have been students of mine for uh, a period of time, I hope this is a refresher to you, but always remember that the book of Revelation gives us its own natural outline. And if you've not heard me teach on that, uh, I definitely want you to have this verse highlighted in your Bible. So open to Revelation in the very first chapter. Because the book of Revelation is the only book in the Bible, the only book of all 66 books that gives us its own natural outline. And we find that in Revelation chapter 1 and verse 19. Let me read it to you and again highlight it in the scriptures. Write down what you have seen, both the things that are now happening and the things that will happen. Revelation 19, uh, Revelation chapter 1, verse 19 has three natural divisions. The things that you have seen, the things that are now happening, and the things that will happen. 
That is the natural outline of the book of Revelation contained right there in sacred scripture. And so Revelation chapter 1 is John, the author of the book of Revelation, written in A.D. 95. Revelation chapter 1 is John writing the things which he had seen. Revelation chapter 2 and 3, John is writing about the things that are now happening. And he writes them specifically in seven literal letters to seven literal churches. Those seven letters are not only literal letters to literal churches, they are also prophetic letters in the chronology of the history of the church. And then in Revelation chapters 4, through the very end of the book, which is Revelation chapter 22, the things that will happen. Now I've covered that before, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. I'll come back to it, I'm sure, in future teachings because it's one of those keys to understanding the book of Revelation. When you open up the book of Revelation and you're studying, trying to learn Bible prophecy, right there in Revelation chapter 1 and verse 19 is the definitive outline of the very vision that John wrote down. The things which you have seen, chapter 1. The things which are now happening, chapters 2 and 3. And the things that are yet to come, Revelation chapter 4 through Revelation chapters 22. Number 2. In the book of Revelation, we read about three series of end time judgments. Number two, in the book of Revelation, we read about a series of end time judgments, and there are three of them. And in those judgments, God is executing His wrath during the tribulation period. So if you're taking notes, number two, in the book of Revelation, in the things that are yet to come, and again, that begins where? Revelation chapter 4 through Revelation chapters 19, Revelation chapter 4, Revelation chapter 5, we have a prelude to the tribulation period. And then in chapters 6 through 19, we have the tribulation. If you're a new student of the Bible and a new student of the book of Revelation, the tribulation period begins in Revelation chapter 6 and goes all the way through Revelation chapter 19. The tribulation ends with the second coming of Christ. We go into Revelation chapter 20. We have the millennium. We go into Revelation chapter 21. We have the new heaven and the new earth. And then in Revelation chapter 22, the final chapter, we have the visionary salutation, the conclusion of the book of Revelation. Now we read about the very first series of end time judgments, which are the seven seals. Now, I want you to walk with me. What are we doing right now? We're lining up the chronology of the text. Where are we headed? We're headed to the last trumpet in Revelation chapter 11. But before we walk into a proper understanding of Revelation chapter 11, as with any proper interpretation of Scripture, you have to understand what is being said within the full context of the total narrative. What is the total narrative? It would be the entire book of Revelation. To understand the book of Revelation, you just can't pick a passage here, pick a passage there, as so many do, and then wonder why they have points of confusion in interpreting end time chronology. We do all proper biblical interpretation. It must answer to the total narrative. That's why I took the time to just briefly give you a thumbnail as to the total narrative of the book of Revelation. So when we get into three series of judgments, this is very important. If you haven't already written it down, write it down. These three series of judgments transpire during the tribulation period. 
When does the tribulation period occur in the book of Revelation? As already mentioned, we have the prelude to it in Revelation 4 and 5, but the actual tribulation chapters are Revelation chapter 6 through Revelation chapter 19. So by the time you get to Revelation chapter 11, which is where we're headed in just a moment, you are already about midway through the tribulation which is why there are a group of people, not the overwhelming majority, it would be a minority, and I don't say that condescendingly, but just factually, a minority of scholars hold to a mid-tribulation view. But to lay a foundation upon which they can build the view of the pre-tribulation, they have to make the last trumpet in 1 Corinthians 15, the same as the last trumpet in Revelation 11. And so we read about the first series of end times judgments, the seven seals, and uh, it is a scroll, a single scroll with seven seals. Each of those seven seals represents a judgment. If you'd like more teaching on that, I have an entire YouTube video and podcast teachings available on what is the seven sealed scroll. So if you want more information on that, there's an entire study on that. I'll not go down that road today for sake of time. But the seven seals and that series of judgments begin in Revelation chapter 6 verses 1 through 17 and go all the way through Revelation chapter 8 verses 1 through 5. Then we read about the second series of judgments which follow the seals and that is the seven trumpets. We begin reading about the judgment, uh, the si second series of judgments, the seven trumpets in Revelation chapter 8 verses 6 through 9, also verse 21 and we read all the way through Revelation chapter 11, verses 15 through 19. And then the third series of judgments is the seven bowls. And the seven bowl judgments are found in Revelation chapter 16, verses 1 through 21. Now I know that if you're a new student of the Bible, uh, some of this is a little overwhelming. And I realize that though I've studied this for uh, 40 years, uh, I am oftentimes guilty of maybe information overload. I'm not trying to overwhelm you with uh, prophetic information. I'm not trying to bury you. If you knew my heart, my heart is to take you by the hand and to systematically and carefully walk you through what Bible prophecy is in proper text and context, but this is one of the beauties of producing this content, is you have the ability to listen to it over and over and over again until you understand it. You also have the ability to hit pause and to take careful notes. What I really want you to have at this point in your understanding is this fundamental. I want you to understand that the tribulation period in the Bible begins in Revelation chapter 6, goes all the way through Revelation chapter 19. And during the tribulation period, Revelation chapter 6 through Revelation chapter 19, I want you to understand that you're going to come upon in your reading three series of judgments. Now one of the things that you need to understand about the three series of these end time judgments is they become progressively worse and increasingly more catastrophic as we are marching through the seven years of tribulation as God is outpouring His wrath. In other words, it is very consequential it is vitally important for you to understand that the three series of judgments are all interconnected. 
As a matter of fact, write that little gold nugget down. The three series of judgments in the tribulation are all interconnected. One more time. The three series of judgments in the tribulation period are all interconnected. The seventh seal from the seal judgments, the seventh seal introduces the seven trumpets. And the seventh trumpet introduces the seven bowls. So again, three series of judgments where God is executing wrath during the tribulation period, and they are all interconnected. And then thirdly, in context, the seventh trumpet seems to occur in the middle of the tribulation. Now, we know from other studies the exact day of the middle of the tribulation because the Bible is clear. Even Daniel in the Old Testament spoke of the division of the tribulation period, that last set of seven that Daniel referred to, by the signing of a peace treaty. That's the beginning of the tribulation. Daniel chapter 9, verse 27. We know the exact day that the tribulation period will begin. It will begin with the signing of a peace treaty in Jerusalem, Israel, by a one world leader. And when he signs that seven year peace treaty with Israel, that is the very day that the tribulation period begins. It is exactly seven years in length by a Hebrew calendar of 360 days. Not seven 365 calendar days, but seven 360 Hebrew calendar days, exactly to the day. And so halfway through the tribulation, the Antichrist breaks and betrays this peace treaty with Israel, and the last three and a half years of the tribulation becomes the wrath of God on a level so severe, so apocalyptic, that Jesus said if his father had not shortened the days to the last three and a half years, Jesus said none would survive. It is going to be the wrath of God at the highest level in all of human history that the world has ever seen and will ever see. So in context, the seventh trumpet in Revelation chapter 11 occurs somewhere in the middle of the tribulation period. Now that's where the debate begins. Uh, and again, it's not a majority of scholarship. It's a minority. Those who hold to the mid-tribulation view are a small minority of scholarship. I am not going to uh, defame them. I'm not going to be overly critical of them. But I am going to be honest enough with you to state that I believe it is poor scholarship. Uh, when I hear people trying to uh, twist the chronology of final Bible prophecy to accommodate a mid-tribulation view, this is just my opinion and I state it as such, I see that as a fairly shallow well of proper scholarship, and I'll tell you that right up front. But there are some people who believe that the church is going to be raptured in the midpoint of the tribulation. And those who espouse this view, as I've already made clear, are called mid-tribulationists. Mid-tribulationists, or the mid-trib view. And those who espouse this view need to, for the sake of the foundation of their view, they need to tell you and teach you that the trumpet in Revelation chapter 11, the seventh trumpet, which is the last of the seven trumpets, so the last trumpet to them, the seventh trumpet, is the same trumpet mentioned in 1 Corinthians 15 
and also the same trumpet that would be found in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. So here we are. I've been teaching you and then bringing you back to center. Here we are back at center with the question, is the last trumpet in Revelation chapter 11 the same trumpet found in 1 Corinthians 15 and also in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4? The last trumpet in 1 Corinthians 15, 52 and the last trumpet or the seventh trumpet in Revelation chapter 11 and 15 are not the same. So I'm going to give you the straight answer up front and then I'm going to back it up with the scripture. But again, if you're taking notes, let me be very clear. The last trumpet in Revelation chapter 11, which is the seventh trumpet in the series of the trumpet judgments, the last trumpet in Revelation chapter 11 is not the same trumpet that we read about in 1 Corinthians 15 and 52. And the mid-tribulation view is, and again, I want to clothe this with humility, but the mid-tribulation view is easily dismantled by a simple side-by-side -side comparison. And so in the conclusion of our teaching today, that's how I'm going to conclude. I've already made the statement that proper context and proper interpretation of text, 1 Thessalonians 4, 1 Corinthians 15, the classic rapture passages, are not the same trumpet as the seventh trumpet in Revelation chapter 11. But it's important because if you ever hear someone teaching or a pastor preaching or someone on social media and they're trying to connect the seventh trumpet in Revelation chapter 11 to the trumpet call of God in 1 Corinthians 15 or 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, if you follow me and listen to our teaching, I hope that a red light will begin to flash in your spirit and you'll understand that is a perversion of the text and it is not what we see by an actual comparison. So let me, before I give you in conclusion, four very easily understood reasons why they're not the same. Let me tell you where the real problem begins. The real problem in this spurious teaching on the mid-tribulation view is really a result of trying to put a legalistic overemphasis upon the word in our English Bibles, last, the last trumpet. They kind of are all in on the last trumpet in 1 Corinthians 15. You know, if it's the last trumpet, it's the last trumpet. And so uh, it, it's their over legalistic emphasis on the word last that really is part of the problem in the interpretation of this spurious view of the church being raptured halfway through. Let me explain it to you this way. Uh, as I am teaching right now, we are in summer. And on the calendar, there is a last day of summer. When the last day of summer arrives, it is not the last summer of your life. And we're obviously uh, allowing for the fact that I'm praying you live a long and satisfying life. Uh, the Bible says, with long life I will satisfy thee. That is a promise in the covenant of those who walk in right relationship with God. So I'll lay that down as a presupposition. I'm praying you live a long, satisfying life. So when the last day of summer arrives, it is not the last summer. It is the last day of this summer. And over the course of your life, there will be many last days of summer. And we could do that with any one of the four seasons. We could do the same with fall. We could do the same with winter. We could do the same with spring. 
And so part of the theological problem with the mid-tribulation view is they put this overemphasis upon that word last, the last trumpet. And you'll often hear them say, well, you don't need to go to seminary or study Hebrew or Greek to understand that the last trumpet is the last trumpet, bless God. And it just simply is poor scholarship. Uh, the word last in the Bible, uh, for example, in the Old Testament, we have reference to the last days, which is specific to the Jewish people. So in the Old Testament, we have the last days as it pertained in the Old Testament to the Jews. In the New Testament, we have teaching on the last days that by and large deals with the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then we also have verbiage in Bible prophecy, not only the speaking of the last days, but the end times. Well, did you know that the last days and the end times are not synonymous? And uh, I will be doing a teaching uh, very soon on what is the difference between the last days and the end times. They are not synonymous. And so if you're listening to someone who's teaching on Bible prophecy, and they've never been taught or they've never discovered that from original text and original languages that the last days and the end times are not synonymous and they're reading passages about last days and end times thinking, well, it's the same thing, it's not, then obviously you're also going to get spurious teaching out of that misunderstanding. This is how the mid-tribulation view is rooted. Its error is rooted, not just one, there are several, but primarily as we're dealing with today, in an overemphasis of trying to use the word last. When you go to school, there is the last bell in the morning session where you break for lunch. Uh, there's the last bell in the afternoon at the end of school. There's the last bell in gym. Uh, when I went to school, I don't know if it's still the same, but uh, you had a bell that rang for you to go to gym. Uh, you had another bell that rang in the gym. Uh, you had a certain amount of time, small time, to change and get into your exercise clothes and, and gym shoes. And then you had uh, a bell that rang that gave you time to get to the showers and then a bell that rang before you went to class. During the course of the school day, there were many what could be called last bells, and this is part of the theological confusion and the wrong teaching on mid-trib view. They put an overemphasis on the word last. Enough said. Let's do the comparisons, and we'll close with this. When you compare, and uh, let me just bring you right back to where we're at, we're dealing with the question, what is the last trumpet in Revelation chapter 11, and the mid-trib view uses a comparison with 1 Corinthians 15 and the last trumpet in 1 Corinthians 15, and they try to say that 1 Corinthians 15, Revelation chapter 11, the last trumpets mentioned in those two chapters are identical. They are not. I've already made that clear several times. Now we'll conclude by just doing a side-by-side -side comparison because the best way to dismantle the view is just do a simple comparison between the two passages. Uh, and I'm going to give you four, four comparisons. And so for those of you who like systematic notes, here's number one. The subject of the trumpet in 1 Corinthians 15 is the church, whereas the subject of the trumpet in Revelation chapter 11 is the wicked world. And so we already see that the subject of the trumpets are not the same. The trumpet in 1 Corinthians 15 is for the church and for believers. The trumpet in Revelation chapter 11 is a part of the series of God's judgments upon the wicked. And the way that we know that, and let me just take the time in this one again, 
Uh, if you're still open to 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 15, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and go down to verse 50. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 50, the Apostle Paul directs his teaching to his fellow brothers and sisters in Christ several times. 1 Corinthians 15, 50, what I am saying, dear brothers and sisters, is that our physical bodies cannot inherit the kingdom of God. So Paul is very clearly, even the very first verse, 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 1, several times in 1 Corinthians 15, the apostle Paul, in proper context, is addressing the church. And then when we go to Revelation chapter 11, uh, Revelation chapter 11, and go down to verse 18, the Bible said the nations are filled with wrath. Make a note of that. Wrath, judgment, the outpouring of God's wrath upon nations. But now the time of your wrath has come. It is time to judge the dead and reward your servants, the prophets, as well as your holy people and all who fear your name. By the way, that's talking about Old Testament Jews who were righteous. There will be a resurrection of righteous Jews at the end of the tribulation. From the least to the greatest, it is time to destroy all who have caused destruction upon the earth. And so when we look at Revelation chapter 11 in context, there's not mention of the church. It's not a message of hope. It's a message of judgment. And so number one, the subject matter of 1 Corinthians 15 and Revelation chapter 11 are not identical. They are diametrically opposed. 1 Corinthians 15, Paul's talking about my brothers and sisters in the Lord. Uh, Romans chapter 11, the Bible is talking about the wrath of God <clears throat> being poured out upon the nations. Number two, the subject matter is different. Number two, the result of the trumpets in 1 Corinthians 15 is the catching up of the church to be with the Lord, whereas the result of the trumpet in Revelation chapter 11 is the judgment of God upon a wicked world. Number two, the result of the trumpet in 1 Corinthians 15, Revelation chapter 11, totally different. The result of the trumpet in 1 Corinthians 15 is the catching up of the bride of Christ. He's addressing brothers and sisters and he's talking about the rapture and the great catching up of the bride of Christ that is the trumpet in 1 Corinthians 15. When we compare it to Revelation chapter 11, the result of the trumpet, which is the seventh trumpet in the series of judgments, is the wrath of God upon the godless world. Number three, the character of the trumpet in 1 Corinthians 15 is the trumpet of God's grace, whereas the character of the trumpet in Revelation chapter 11 is God's judgment. Let me say that again. The character is totally different. The character of the trumpet in 1 Corinthians 15 is the trumpet of God's grace, whereas the character of the trumpet in Revelation chapter 11 is God's judgment. And lastly, and I close with this, the timing of the trumpet is different. The timing of the trumpet, number four, the timing of the trumpet in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 signals the close of the life of the church age. It is the last trumpet of the church age. The church age began in the book of Acts chapter 2. That was the inauguration and the birth of the church age. It began in the upper room in Acts chapter 2. The church age ends with the rapture of the church. So the timing of the trumpet in 1 Corinthians 15 is the close of the church age. Whereas the timing 
of the trumpet in Revelation chapter 11 marks a climax in the progression of tribulation judgments. It is the last trumpet of judgment in preparation for God's eternal kingdom. And that's enough on that for today. Uh, listen to it again and again until you're clear on it. But I think it's quite simple. And primarily, I want you to grasp those last four comparisons. Because number one, as we saw that the subject of the trumpets are different. Number two, the result of the trumpets are different. Number three, the character of the trumpets are different. And number four, the timing of the trumpets are different. So in summation, as we close our Bible study today, what we learn in a careful comparison between the last trumpet of 1 Corinthians 15, Revelation chapter 11, is that these trumpets cannot be the same. The four significant differences that I concluded with are self-evident that the texts, when properly read, in context, leave no doubt that they are markedly different. The trumpets in 1 Corinthians 15 and Revelation chapter 11 are not the same. The trumpet in Revelation chapter 11 is the last of the seventh trumpets in God's series of judgments that become progressively worse and cataclysm, cataclysmically powerfully in executing all of what God has promised to pour out upon the ungodly, and they are not the same. I hope that that answers your question thoroughly, and I hope you'll join us as we continue to study Bible prophecy in the days ahead. But as I said at the very beginning of this teaching, the most important thing about Bible prophecy I understand that for many of you it's overwhelming, but I promise you that if you'll be faithful, I ask you many, many times, please allow me to be a trusted voice in studying the Scripture. If you'll give me at least a year of your life, I promise you that wherever your faith is now, that not through my abilities or my teaching, but through the eternal Word of God. Romans 10, 17, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. The more you are taught, and the more you understand, and the more you receive the Word of God, nothing is unimportant. Everything in the Bible is important. You know, when people say, I don't know why you spend time answering some of those questions that are unimportant. I vehemently disagree with you. If God put it in the Bible, it is important. And the Bible said it is there for our understanding. And the more you understand the Bible, and the more you understand Bible prophecy, and the last days in which we live, the stronger your foundation will be for living a successful Christian life and being ready to meet the Lord. Over 400 times in the Bible, we are promised the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. Are you ready? Are you living a holy life? Do you have a clear, distinct memory of a time in your life when you've repented of sin and received the Lord Jesus and the forgiveness that only God the Father offers? If you've never done that, I love you, but you've got to make a decision. Will you pray with me? Wherever you're at right now, if your desire is to be forgiven of all of your sin, to have peace with God, to receive salvation as the greatest gift available by God's great grace and mercy, you can do that right now. Pray with me. And when we're done praying, I want you to go to our website, lostlamb.org. Just write me a brief email to let me know where you're from, uh, that you prayed with us today. Everything we can do to help you grow in your faith, we desire to do that. Pray with me right now. Just say, Heavenly Father, today as I was listening to the Bible, I believe you were speaking to me. I acknowledge my sin. And today, I sincerely repent. 
I turn my back on sin and I turn my heart to Jesus. Come into my heart. Wash me and make me pure and clean and holy. Today I receive salvation by your grace. And I vow this day I will live for you. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and give me the power to be what I ought to be. I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.